This video assumes you have Clip Studio Paint or at least Manga Studio 5. Uh, I'm not sure if it would work with other studio with other versions of Manga Studio. Uh, for example, if you've got Manga Studio 4, I'm not sure if it'll be uh, the same. I'm not sure if the buttons will be in the same place. But the tutorial still might apply to you, so I'd recommend watching it. So let's say you have a grayscale image here, uh, or a drawing you did in grayscale uh, to help you get the tones right, and you wanted to color it. You want to color it pretty quickly. You want to get the job done fairly fast. The deadline's coming up. You want this. You want this finished. Uh, now, if you had this in Photoshop, uh, you'd have to edit a few layers, you'd, uh, you'd go into the channels and uh, make it so that the brightness equal to opacity in the channels, and you'd have to you'd do a bit of tomfoolery to eventually get your what you wanted, the desired effect. They make it a little bit easier in Clip Studio Paint, though it is technically hidden. Uh, it's something I only found out recently, and uh, it's the reason I'm sharing this with you all, because I would have found this super useful if I knew about it earlier. So right here you can see I've got my grey, I've got white and then black and then the, all the gradients in between. Uh, just did that with the <laughs> gradient tool. Uh, and I've got that layer selected that that's on. Now let's say I wanted to colour it, I wanted it to be white to dark, I wanted it to be red to dark red. So what I would do is, uh, ensuring that I had the layer selected, I would go to convert brightness to opacity. You can see it changed a little bit there because all the whites uh, became opaque. So if I go on the layer underneath, have my red selected, paint underneath it, you can see my colour changes depending on the darkness. This makes colouring super easy. Now I'm going to show it again with this drawing here. So with it selected on the layer, edit, convert brightness to opacity, and then on the layer underneath you can colour it. There you go, super easy colouring, super quick, uh, makes the process a ton quicker. Your colours do may look a little bit muddier, uh, but if you're using the right colours and you know a bit of colour theory, I'm sure you can create that kind of thing. Uh, and it's not big, as big of an issue that you've got these muddy colours. Uh, one thing that I, one observation I do have, uh, especially regarding the image on the screen right now, is in your grayscale image, the uh, your tonal drawing that you've made. What you want to have is you want to have absolute whites and absolute darks. You want to have white, dark, and then the grayscales in between. My reason for pointing this out, even though it may seem obvious, is because as you can see with the image that I've got here of the clown girl, uh, you can see that I don't really have many whites. Uh, I have a lot of grayscale and a lot of, I have a bit of dark in the face there, some absolute black, but not a lot of white. In fact, there's no white, like dead white, like as that white in the corner there, in this image. This means that when I do have the uh, layer, the like transparency uh, on the brightness, it means that my colours won't be as bright on the image. This means that my colours will look a bit muddy, it'll make the image a bit darker, it's just it's not a great look. So when you are doing a grayscale image, you want to have some whites and some blacks, and then obviously the grayscale is in between to sort of even out the image to make the colour look a lot better. I do have an example on this one where you can see here on this image I've got prepared, uh, where I've done the same thing. That I've got some absolute white in the eye there for a highlight, and then uh, the whole image is lighter overall. So when I do add my color layer, uh, the colors look a lot lighter, they look a lot better, and they, they pop a lot more, as opposed to the muddy look on this one. I hope this video has been useful for you, and if you've got any questions about the process of this, or how to do it, uh, or how it works, if there's any questions at all, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. I'm probably going to be making more videos if I spot anything in Clip Studio Paint that I didn't know before, but isn't as well documented. So uh, if there are any suggestions on how to do certain things, please just leave them in the comments, thank you.